This is the download from Sounds Profitable, your daily source for the essential news of the business of podcasting. Brought to you by Spreaker from iHeart. I'm Tom Webster. Here's what you need to know for today, Wednesday, August 30th. From Magellan AI, July 2023 Top Spenders, Movers, and Shakers in Podcast Advertising. Magellan AI's monthly analysis of advertising data from the top 3,000 podcasts in the U.S. on Apple Podcasts has arrived. HelloFresh, Amazon, and BetterHelp continue to hold the top three spots for top spenders from the last month. And in the top movers and shakers category, Hewlett Packard rockets to the top, reportedly spending just $1,226 on podcasts in June before rocketing to over $800,000 in July. From Signal Hill Insights, can the benefits of digital be a rising tide for all audio? Dentsu's global ad spend forecast from May of this year shows the difference between the growth of digital advertising overall, racing to 56% nearly of global ad spend last year, and the share Dentsu assigns to audio, which is just 5%, down from 5.2% last year. Audio has the audience, but it needs the advertiser investment to match its share of time. If podcasting, or audio in general, is to grow on pace with digital advertising overall, it'll take an industry-wide effort to position digital audio in the same competitive set as other forms of digital advertising. CTV ad sellers are pushing more content-related signals into the programmatic bid stream, and this from Digiday. Connected TV, or CTV ad buyers, are beginning to ask CTV sellers to pass program-level information in the programmatic bid stream such as which specific show an ad would run on during the campaign. Sellers are reluctant, preferring to hold on to that information as a value add for direct deals. Still, buyers are not satisfied with current compromises like signals, telling them what genre of content their impression ran on. Podcasting, on the other hand, was held to the standard of providing show-level data from the beginning, with major programmatic platforms pushing against inventory sources who did not initially share what podcasts their ads ran on. And from the Sports Business Journal, TV's Nielsen complaints get louder. Football season is upon us, and TV networks are steamed at Nielsen's plan for measuring Amazon Prime's Thursday night football streaming block. The current plan is to allow Amazon to use first-party data to supplement reporting its viewership for the programming block, a move that could set a precedent for other streamers to do the same and further undermine Nielsen's position as an objective, impartial ratings data aggregator. The Video Advertising Bureau has objected to the Nielsen change, and the Media Rating Council is expected to rule on the decision sometime today. Yet another reminder that impartial measurement options are a critical component for any media industry. And for the rest of the news, five late-night talk show hosts have launched a Spotify podcast, which will use all proceeds to pay staff of their respective shows who are affected by the WGA sag after strike. Australians 10 and up are now listening to an average of 13 hours of commercial radio per week, and children's financial literacy podcast Million Bazillion is launching an educational live show visiting middle schools across the U.S. Be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or at soundsprofitable.com, where you can also subscribe to the newsletter version. The download is written and produced by Brian Barletta, Gavin Gaddis, and me. Our show is hosted on Art19. For Sounds Profitable, I'm Tom Webster. Download us again tomorrow. 